Hi students, let's talk about how we can do problems involving simple harmonic motion. Uh, there's really two different problems that we're going to do and they are very very similar. The equations look almost the same. So what we can do when we talk about uh, problems with simple harmonic motion is we can solve problems for the period of a pendulum. So if I have something that swings back and forth, right, so I've got some length of string or rope and then there's a mass that's on the, on the bottom of it, as it swings back and forth can I figure out how long it takes to go from one side and then return back to that other side? Uh, and it turns out, uh, yes, there are three variables and not all of them are needed for this. So one of the variables is I can change the length of the string to make it longer or shorter. I could change the amount of mass that's hanging at the bottom. And then the other one is perhaps the angle that it makes with the perpendicular. It has perpendicular here, and how far out will it swing? Uh, I can tell you that only one of those is required for determining the period of the pendulum, uh, and I'll show you that in just a minute. The other thing that we can do is we can also, here's that spring again, is we can calculate how long it takes for a mass spring system to oscillate back and forth. So if I had this spring that was here, and I had a, a mass that was attached to it, and this was oscillating back and forth, um, what do I need to figure out how long it takes to go back and forth? So that's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to put the practice problem that we're going to do on the screen, and then I'll show you how to do it. All right, now that we've had a chance to read the pendulum problem, uh, what we want to do is we need to design a pendulum clock that has a period of one second. And all we need to do is figure out how long does that pendulum have to be. So for this problem, the period of the pendulum, and remember period is capital T, is just one second. And what we want to do is we want to figure out, well, how long does it need to be? And and really that's it. These are the only things that are needed for this problem. Um, if we want to find the period of a pendulum, then the only thing that we need for this is T equals, this is the equation, two times pi times the square root of L divided by G. And that's it, that's the whole thing. Um, if we did have a mass spring system And that's just any mass that's attached to a spring that's allowed to oscillate in simple harmonic motion. Uh, the equation looks almost the same. If we wanted to find the period of that, again, it would be two times pi. We have a square root, but instead of L over G, it would be M for the mass over K, which is the spring constant. And you would do these problems exactly the same way. So for this problem, what we need to do is we just need to take this equation right here and we need to solve it for L. So L is underneath of the radical. So in order to get rid of that square root business, I need to square everything. So that's the first thing that I'll do. So I'll square both sides. So I end up with T squared equals four pi squared L over G. And all I have to do now is just make a little bit of uh, algebraic rearrangements. I'll move the G over the other side. I'll divide both sides by four pi squared and throw that underneath. And the equation to solve this practice problem is just simply L equals T squared times G divided by four pi squared. And that's it. That is all we need to do for this particular problem. That's the equation that solves the problem. Let's put the numbers in. So in this case, it's actually, it's very nice. We've got only one second for the period. So one second, we'll still square that. And then G of course, 9.81 meters per second squared divided by four pi squared. And we put all those numbers into the calculator and we end up with point to five meters. So that's what we need. We need a pendulum that has a length of 0.25 meters. The mass doesn't matter. 
And as long as the angle is small, like 15 or so degrees uh, or, or less, then the angle doesn't matter either. So that's how you would do the pendulum problem. You would do a mass spring system problem exactly the same way, either solving usually for M or for K. Of course, if you had to solve for period for each of these, there's no rearrangement that's needed. So give the rest of those practice problems a try and let me know if you have any questions.